Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another Maya 2023 tutorial. And this time we're going to be talking about the new feature Booleans. Booleans is a powerful tool and it has been improved in Maya 2023 and I wanted to demonstrate to you how to use it. If you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up your software and let's go ahead and explore Booleans in Maya 2023. All right, so here we have our two basic objects. I made a cube and I added some beveled edges and I also added a cylinder that has beveled edges. And then I'm going to demonstrate to you all the cool Boolean techniques and then show you some fun stuff that you can do with it. OK, so make sure you watch all the way to the end. OK, so up here at the top, we have mesh Booleans and I'm going to tear this off because we have a bunch of options to play with. And the first one is union. And before I hit that union button, if I go inside this cube, you're going to see that the in I can actually see the inside of the cube and there is an object inside of it, which is clearly the cylinder. And I'm going to explain why I showed you that when I click union, go ahead and click on union. The first thing you'll notice is that it now has a new edge. And if I go inside the cube, that cylinder is now gone. So basically what union means is that it created a new piece of geometry that intersects those two together and gets rid of any extra mesh that you don't see. So it's like the shell of the two objects. So when you hit that Boolean button, you're going to get a couple of things. One of them is you still have the original cube and the original cylinder, and you also have a new piece of geometry. This is the union function. And on your attribute editor, you're going to see that there is a tab called poly boolean and you have your cube and you also have your cylinder and there's also a bunch of things you can play with here also is that this is live i can actually grab the cylinder and move it around and it will update the poly surface so it is still live and to get rid of it you just delete the history but for the sake of this demonstration i'm actually going to duplicate this new piece of mesh so here i have my poly surface i'm going to go ahead and control d duplicate it and move it aside and i'm going to call this union all right, let's take a look at some other pieces. Now, in the past, back in my day, we had to press undo. And so we can undo the mess that we made and then do the Boolean functions again. However, now with Maya 2023, you don't have to do that. If you go over here to the poly Boolean tab, you can see that we have a couple of options here. And one of them is union, which we're using. And the other one is difference A minus B. So that means that the cylinder gets subtracted from this new piece of mesh or from the cube. And that's how we get this new mesh. So let's go ahead and select the new surface, control D, and then move it aside. So this is going to be my diff A B. Now, remember, this is still live, so I can grab the cylinder and actually move it around and still get an updated mesh. So if I want to, I can go ahead and grab this new surface, control D, duplicate it, and we have the same effect. So this is going to be diff a, b, you know, two, just to kind of demonstrate how cool it is. All right. Let me put that cylinder. Actually, I'll just leave it there. Let's go back. And actually, I don't need this Boolean window. What I want to do is go back to this tab, click over here and then choose difference. So not only if you accidentally click the wrong Boolean option, you can always fix it. It is that fast. So now we have a new surface and this one is I'm going to duplicate this one again. B A. So you're subtracting the cylinder or the cube from the cylinder. And please note that they are filled. That means that it feels like a whole object. Why is that important? Because I wanted to demonstrate you the next part. Well, I'll demonstrate in a second. Let's go to intersection. So intersection is exactly what it sounds like. It intersects. I'm going to duplicate this. It intersects both of them and just keeps the area where they intersected. So now I have all these cool pieces. Oop. So that's intersection. Neat. All right, let's go back. And by the way, I can actually move this polygon, the poly surface. So this is just a cage, right? And then whatever I do to it will still affect it. So for example, if I go back to difference, it will add, update the mesh. So I don't have to leave it there. I could just see it like this as well. So it might be easier to see your geometry with all, without all the extra wireframe. All right, let's go back into here and now we're going to try slice. So it doesn't look like much has happened, but if I select the object, you're going to notice that there's an edge. And if I select the faces, I'll be able to actually move them. So the slice actually, instead of doesn't extrude or anything, but it gives you the outline of the, the mesh. You can actually do something with it. 
So it actually has, so it makes, so basically it's not hollow, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this down a little bit just to demonstrate. So that's slice. So let me go ahead and duplicate it and call this slice. Going back to this, we also have hole. So it is basically hollow in here now. So instead of filling it in with something like mesh here, it actually will keep it hollow. So if you need something that's empty on the inside, then that's how you can accomplish it. So this one, it's called hole punch. Okay, going back to this. Let's do cutout. So as you can see, it gives you the outside of that space. So this is cutout. Duplicate that. My collection is growing. And finally, we have split edges. So this one's a little bit different. It almost looks very similar to um, slice. But the difference is that it's still connected, right? So there is no extra mesh. So if you wanted to do something with this, let me go ahead and duplicate it, Control D. You don't have to worry about any mesh that is already there, right? So I can do this. Oh, looks like I selected some things that I wasn't supposed to. Right. And then I can extrude control E and then create some unique shapes based on that slice. So that's split edges. Union, we have difference AB, difference AB because I moved it. Then we have BA, we have intersection, we have slice where you can see the outline. And I might as well, just to demonstrate it, might as well grab these guys. Let me double check to make sure I didn't select anything. And if I try to move it, you're going to see that it actually comes with some mesh. <laughs> and let's see, we have that one. We also have hole punch. We have cutout. And then, of course, we have split edges. So we have a lot of really fantastic shapes that we can use using Booleans. Okay, that's great and all, but you know, what exact, what is its purpose? Like, what is the point of all this? Well, let's go ahead and just delete the history of the transformations. I'm going to go ahead and hide it and bring out, you know, cheese. So basically the cheese idea is that you start off with a basic shape, right? That looks like a piece of cheese. And then you're going to put a bunch of spheres on it like so. And then you can use the Boolean function to make yourself some cheese. So you're not limited to one geometry with another. You can actually select all of these and then go to mesh Boolean difference. And you can immediately get yourself a new piece of cheese. So I'm going to grab this and move it aside so you guys can see the cheese. And it does give you higher mesh. So if you press a number three, you're not going to get great mesh. So just keep that in mind that this does give you a ton of end guns. And again, the, the amazing part about this is that you can grab all of these spheres and you can smooth them and automatically the mesh will update here. So really quickly, I can create a piece of cheese and yeah, let me duplicate it. And then I can hide these guys. So now I have a piece of cheese really fast. I also brought in earlier let me grab this and cheese done. Also brought in studio lighting. So let me bring in my studio lighting and you guys can see a video tutorial on that. I'll leave a link above and I can just go ahead and bring in my giant piece of cheese and of course render it out. So relatively quickly, you can create abstract shapes. You can definitely create cheese really fast and also you can just do about anything if you like the biggest issue is that it does give you a bunch of end gons so if you're trying to create anything that flexes for rigging any characters and things like that you should not be using booleans or you're gonna have to do a lot of cleanup but in hard surface models or things that aren't really are not gonna move and you're just gonna render booleans should work just fine hopefully you found it interesting and you liked it
Let me know by leaving a comment below. If you learned a thing or two, please go ahead and like and subscribe. That is your message to me that you like this type of content and that you want to see more. And I also wanted to say thank you so much for subscribing. I am really close to 60,000 subscribers. When I started this YouTube channel a long time ago, it was mostly for my class when I was teaching and it was for my students to have access to all my lectures. And I just wanted to help my students. And it's really amazing to see how my videos have reached so many people. So I really am grateful that you have been with me through my journey of growing my channel. It's kind of turned into its own beast where it was just dedicated to schoolwork. Now it's dedicated to just helping you guys become stronger artists so that you can uh, either become an industry professional or grow as an industry professional. So I am just super, super excited that I'm so close in getting 60,000. I would have never, ever, ever thought that that would happen. So thank you so much for watching. You have no idea how much I really appreciate it especially when you guys subscribe and of course when you like. So thank you, thank you. And don't forget to keep creating. And of course, I will see you next time in another video tutorial.